Welcome back. This is a very special, exclusive episode of Perspectives and Facts podcast. Episode 31 is your boy, Florida Boy Jay. We are here recording live from Orlando, Florida, and I have the homie here. Aaron has came in uh, to Florida for CPAC for a few other things, and, and we're happy to find him and uh, get him on the schedule. And some decent restaurants. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, how you been, man? How's Florida treating you? How's your vacation? So far, it's, it's been all right. Um, yeah. I went to uh, went to the strip club last night. That was a little bit of a disaster. But the funny thing yeah, is, I went into that. a gas station afterwards, saw probably one of the best looking women I think I've ever seen. Yeah. And uh, she worked at another strip club. She was gorgeous. And she worked at another strip club. She was really nice looking. Right. And uh, went to a steakhouse last night. Went to Shula's. I mean, just big name. It was a yeah. disaster. So wow. we're, we got to hit the. We, we're definitely get. I'm gonna get seafood tonight. Oh, Whatever shit. you want, you, you can yeah, get. yeah. Definitely. But Boathouse after this, uh, and CPAC. I think this might be one of my last years coming. I think it's it's on the way down. Like it's it's Damn. influences down. I mean, Damn. Trump is speaking right now. The venue was so small, I couldn't like get through. The venue is a disaster. I had to worry about parking. It, the venue last year was much better. So hopefully Trump says some goat level stuff and we'll just see from there. All right. All right, man. And um, I guess so So far you got some good things some bad things about uh, Florida. Oh, I like uh, Florida, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, like you said, still closed. You know, sometimes. You no, I'm going to go to that other one tonight. I'm going to go to the, see the other one tonight. I've been in Florida twice within a week. I get the Miami right. trip and I prefer northern Florida, though. I prefer I think Duval is probably the best. Yeah, in wait. my honest opinion. And the panhandle's decent too. This Orlando's changed. I, I came here, I came here last year and it's yeah. changed. It's a lot, it's a lot more international, if you know what I mean. You know what oh, I yeah. mean by that. They yeah, were definitely. flooding in people from the third world. So definitely. Um, one thing about especially Florida, mostly like the panhandle and North Florida, they kind of consider that like South Georgia because we're kind of more of like backwoods, you know what I'm saying? We're more kind of like I would say more like country. But the further you go down south, the more like international it gets, the more uh, cultural it gets. Uh, you'll go down to Miami and me and you won't even be considered like black Americans. Like they'll just think we're some type of Hispanic background because that's pretty much anybody of melanin, you know, with melanin in, inside yeah. of them. They're pretty much not black American, just yeah. Americans pretty much um, imported. Yeah. So, but I will say this, we do have one of the, if not the freest state in the country. Agreed. We do have um, one of the lenient taxes or tax systems in the country. Like yep. people from Florida, I know just regular us, like in your mid 20s, I will kind of compare it to Texas in a way. Like in your yeah. mid 20s, like you can have a nice crib, nice car, cool little job and kind of build up from there where, you know, I've, I've, I've we've been to California. I've been to- um, Not Miami though. No, 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 no. Miami's place. different. Miami's kind of um California. Yeah. But I mean the laws are still there, but everything is just unaffordable. I don't like that. I don't I don't that's not a it's funny because you're importing people from those countries. I don't like that. I don't like the fact that that somebody that works 50 hours, 60 hours a week right. can't live a normal life. And the funny thing is we import these people from all these other countries and that you know, they work hard and then they don't have enough money to really survive or live their life. And they bring right. that bullshit here with them. Right. And so you look at the cities that they're going to. You work 70 hours a week in California. You're still on the bottom. You work 80 hours a week in Miami. You're still on the bottom. It's like th they're bringing it, it's. Some people say that these people are escaping. Um, like they're fleeing poverty and war torn conditions. Are they escaping it or are they bringing it with them? Because the people make the country. Right. So like Miami, disaster. I, I don't like. And then there's like, like the, the economy. What What is their economy there? Oh, man. The economy in Miami is, I would say it's kind of like, it reminds me of Los Angeles where it's like a predatory economy where <laughs> it's, um, it's oppressive opportunities. Like, like when I say that, you literally have to cannibalize capitalism. It's cannibalistic capitalism. Yep. If you are rich, it's because you're eating the poor. And if you're poor, it's because you're getting eaten by the rich. There's no really Disaster. middle class because whatever middle class has been evaporated like every other big city. The middle class is really a 50-year window yeah. where, you know, you can be a high school dropout yep. and get a good job and buy a house for $92,000 and pay $600 a month in 1992 with your wife and have two cars and, and raise a kid. Now, you and your girl got to finance 
something for 300K, yeah. 400K. Like when our parents is coming up, yeah, you can get a house for around 89,000. Like you get a house for what an expensive car is worth right now. And yeah. you were getting that mortgaged with a partner. But also, yeah, I agree. But think about it. Think about those days, right? Right. W- were we, did, did the United States look like the United Nations? It was more, it was more two groups of people here. It was a biracial country as it should stay. Right. Um, that, that affects everything. But once again, these people bring this mentality with them. Nobody puts the American worker first. So for me, that's what makes America what it is. I don't care about rich. I don't care about poor. And my lo- I mean, I like capitalism. It's cool. But I'm not loyal. If capitalism isn't providing a comfortable life for the average person, well, the average male, let me say that, you know, because even in the worst, you know, somebody's busting it open on the pole in Ukraine tonight and they're still going to make some money. So if you're not putting the average male first, if the average male is not living a good life in your country, then that then then you're a disaster. Do you feel like America does not subscribe to traditional patriarchy as far as, like you said, the male is in the nuclear family aspect. The male is the head of the household. The male is the tone setter. The man with a, with a job that he can provide and enough self-esteem backed by his government or the environment around him can uh, bring a family into fruition, can actually have a stable home in an environment. But do you feel like America kind of does not subscribe to patriarchy, thus Anymore. gives any and everybody that job or that opportunity where you should, I won't say just directly exclusively give it to males, but there should be an interest that um, males or, or leaders of households do make a certain amount of money to live and have a standard of living that upholds the American way. Yes. Um I, and what's funny is even if we look at your example of the 90s, right? We think right. about people having a finance. We think about the car. You said the car, the house. People have the finance. You can work a decent job, drop out or of high school. Or how grandma worked at the diner and paid off her college tuition but, at the same time. But think about it, right? Right. Outside of the diner, all these other companies don't want to put men first. They don't care about the needs of men. They don't care about what's happening with men. They don't want they don't care if men are leaders. They don't and frankly, they don't want men to be leaders. They don't want to teach leadership to men, to boys, right? They want they they would rather they would rather fit a uh, a square peg in a round hole and make something that's not designed to be a leader. You would rather force that to be a leader instead of focusing on something that's already predisposed with leadership qualities and capabilities. That's Which been it, proven time and time yeah, again over time centuries and, time again. and thousands of years. Time and time would, again. Would you say that what's going on in America right now is a more sophisticated, uh, mature version of Section 8 on a wide scale? <laughs> uh, yeah, 100%. 100%. Everybody wants it. Everybody, like every company has initiatives to put men on the bottom and to put women or whoever above men. Every right. company has that. Every company has an HR department. That wants to uh, that doesn't care about what happens to men. I mean, it's all about women in tech and women and all this stuff. And it's just like, what about what about all the men that are committing suicide? What about all the men that are homeless? What about all the men that can't that are unemployed? Because I'm going to tell you the truth. Uh, one of the biggest wake up calls I had was my last corporate job in a medical field. And the office was predominantly women. There were no alpha males in our department. We were uh, pretty much a predominantly black department with predominantly about 80 to 90% black women. Um, our supervisor was a black woman. Her manager was a black woman who yeah. was over the department. And, you know, they probably answered to a white, black, ball, whoever at the top. I know it was some white dude who pretty much ran the company at the time. But what I'm saying is it was not a lot of me and yous at these jobs. Yeah. And for us to survive. So what about the men they did hire? Were these guys that were batting both sides? One of the, of the main ball? guys, like one of the main guys who he was one of the, I guess, leads in one department. He used to come to work with feminism shirts. Now, granted, he was one of those dudes like he can get any girl he wanted. Right. Like, he, okay. like he wasn't like some, he was putting camouflage on. He wasn't like a fat undesirable slob okay. that was yeah. trying no he was like one of the dudes like he would come he would fly he'd be fly to work and everything but the way he would pander to the women i understand that he worked with nothing but women so it's a certain level of uh care you have to have around them because you're not dealing with men but the way he would pander or wear feminism shirts are just like 
The tactics he used to survive there, I can tell were disingenuous, but I can tell that he understood the game to the point where if you where if he didn't submit his manhood and subscribe to feminism around these women, they were going to eventually weed him out. Like the way they did with me, where it would be in meetings, and because I disagree or I don't see a certain vision and I'm expressing it, and I'm not yelling. I'm just, a, this is a male voice in the room. Yeah. And because it's a room full of women, this male voice is going to automatically dominate, not because I'm right, not because of uh, the, the age difference, but just because I am a man in the room. Yeah. And a lot of things in the department didn't get fixed or didn't get addressed because you don't have a man addressing these things and forcing accountability because yeah. it's nothing but women. And it's like a, a everybody gets a trophy. You can't offend anybody. We're not getting to the root, calling people out who need, who, should be getting a certain level of coaching that sometimes only a man can provide or somebody who's exuding masculinity and directivity can provide. Agree. No, man. I mean, you have to stay in the closet. Sounds like to me, I mean, you couldn't be yourself. It's funny because there are a lot of these companies claim to be about all about expression and be who you are and all that work life balance stuff. Um, but in that situation, you could you had to stay in the you were the one that had to stay in the closet with who you were. And then right. the funny thing about it is we got all these movies and all these TV shows and all of these things about well, I was walking into the boardroom and I wasn't really accepted by he in the woman in the boardroom. And it's like, okay, well, what about us when we walk into a boardroom that's not predominated by men? Like seriously, like like if I walk into Sephora right now, right? Literally, if I go into the mall and go into Sephora and I'm like, I think like is going to be an issue. If I go to try to work at, was that Tory Burch or something like that? Of course, I can't just walk into Tory Burch and then expect, you know what I mean? Right, it's, it's sometimes so you have to, like the only types of men I do see working in these stores are part of the community. Of course, yeah. And it's kind of like. Of course, bro, but anything, but it's all about, they're, they're aligned with the feminists to block you out. Or the track of trying to slow down reproduction. In my way, I hmm. feel like a lot of the Me Too movement has seeped over into the workplace to the point where, like, I know back in the day, like, women probably did get harassed by certain men. Um, yeah. But at the same time. I heard a very interesting statistic on Fox News. I got to tell you this. Yeah, go ahead. I was watching, I think it was Greg Gutfield. He said this, like, a couple months ago. He said back in 1970, close to 30 to 40 percent of, of women met their husbands at work. Like, can you imagine that today? And the way they discourage workplace relationships Dude, now. They don't have to discourage it. We're all afraid. Literally. Like, we're oh all afraid. God. Like, you don't have to discourage anything. Yo, we're how all... many stories you got of, like, aunts and uncles or something like that where she's like, oh, man, he asked me on a date, like, 15 times. Like, I gave in. Like, I love I love this exactly. guy. Exactly. He's now looking he... like, damn, I regret, like, bothering her because now, like, this is my wife. But you know what I'm saying? Like, but think about that. You can't approach. The courting. A, you can't. You can't. You can't look at somebody 15 times today. Like, think about that. I remember, it's funny you said that. I remember some of these, hearing some of these stories growing up. I remember the guy who got rejected like four or five times, you know. And, and she finally took him up on offer exactly, one day. Exactly. And so now it's like, you can't even talk. And the thing about it too is like, you work me to work, you want me to work more hours than ever as an American. So now I'm here 10 to 12 hours with these women and I'm being discouraged from dating them outside of the workplace. But if I'm doing what the work it's demands, disaster. I don't have time to go outside the workplace to find a partner. Thus, huh. I'm being a single parent family or just yep. a single household. Yep. And I'm never going to build up the tangibles that is going to take to sustain a family, sustain the type of lineage. And that's not America, man. And so you think about it. It's funny that you talk about you got to work all these hours and, you know, and you're not able to really talk to the women. It's, it's funny because it's I honestly generally think that when you graduate from college, and you, you know, you start working. Right. And you're not, if, if you start working a corporate job and you graduate from college, there's nowhere for you to meet women. You're done. Your, your, your days of meeting women are done. Unless you're, because if you want to meet women now and you're not meeting them at work or whatever, like, dude, you, like, you can use a day nap. Those are, those have, those have crashed. But like the guys I see with the best looking women are all in the industry. They're all industry guys. They're guys who work at the club. They're guys who work in, in entertainment or something like that, right? right? Because because there, it's funny. You know, that's where the Me Too movement started was entertainment. But yet now, it's like it, it's spread to, to everywhere. But the entertainment guys are still meeting their women at work. They're still, you know... ASAP Rocky still meeting Rihanna. You know because what I'm saying? Those, like the, I feel like because those women are selling a certain... 
perception. And, you know, like I say, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Like in certain environments, the rules that we have to go by aren't going to be followed by these people who are making six, seven figures. They're not going to be followed by these people who are in high demand, right? You know what I'm saying? Just like you can probably do something as a famous person. Well, mostly we know this and not get the same treatment that me you're going to get because you have that type of notoriety. You don't have to be famous, but as long as the women in the vicinity know you have some type of clout or some type of uh, status within that environment, whatever it's a strip club, it's a regular club, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a workplace. Yeah. If she feels like people look to you as a type of authority or some type of like, okay, if I say this, I say that, that's when women are attracted to you. Women are more attracted to power than anything. Cause I, I just seen fat, sloppy, crazy looking dudes who are like the baddest chick. And it's like, what are they there for? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times it's just like for the status. And, but I mean, with guys too, right? Like I said, with, with us, we're going to go for the chick that looks good on our arm. Like, yeah. I don't really believe in that whole, like, oh, I like who, who I like or dudes who date like unattractive women on purpose. Like, I don't subscribe to that because are you really getting something you're qualified for? Or are you getting what you want? Yeah. Like a lot of people talk about, oh, being faithful. Being when you It's like, listen, if you have a lot of options, are you just going to go to the dealership and pick out the first car you see? Or are you going to, if you're qualified to get the, the showroom car? Yeah. That's what you're going to do. Yeah. So I think that plays with men and women. But at the same time, just getting back to the conversation about the workplace and everything and just trying to uh, find some type of, um, I guess, the social medium to holler at women. Because it's more women than ever in the social environment, in the workplace. You know what I'm saying? Especially in corporate America. But it's less men than ever. Yeah. So the men who are in these places, you're dealing with probably like 10, 15 women a day you would probably talk to. But you can't talk to them because of. It doesn't matter. I, I had to be honest with you. Everybody always throws the numbers out there, right? Like when you go to college, right? Oh, there's one, there's 10 women for every one man. There's 15 women for every, it doesn't matter, right? Because those 15 women are all, they all want the same guy. Yeah. Or in, this they, day and, or in this day and age, the same woman. And honestly, and, but I'll say this too, especially going to Jacksonville, bro. Like last night I was out and I see, and maybe this is a Florida thing too. I see a lot of attractive women with regular ass looking dudes, right? And it just sometimes it blows my mind because certain places I go to, even in Jacksonville, like the bad chicks are like the super, even in my city, like some of the bad women, because we're not like a big city, you probably the same thing Kansas City, but like, yeah. like the bad chicks, yeah, they treat them like Ari and like the famous girls on social media, you know what I'm saying? But if you take them hoes like the LA or Miami, they're just regular bitches. You take most Houston, they just regular bitches. But Dude, in the hometown, take, they're like hometown take the ba- heroes. And you take the baddest women from LA or Houston, and you take them to Columbia, and they're on the bottom of the barrel. What I like getting that too. Like, yeah, no, nah, bro, I just got bad. You take them somewhere else, they're the bottom of the barrel. But this is the thing. Uh, well, number one, I'm happy that average men are getting super attractive women. Yeah. I, I don't really think that that's what's happening today. I mean, because we have, you may see it out. You may see a. You know, you may see two birds land on the same stone, but um, what we have is men having the least amount of sex of all time. The That's statistics are Even saying. Even Judge Joe Brown said that a few months the, ago. The statistics are proving otherwise for that. Um, I got to be honest, man. I'm not seeing that many men with women as I did before, and I'm not seeing that many women who are young or attractive with that have children. That's crazy. I'm not seeing them with children. How many? How many women you see that are young at, w- pushing the stroller? It, it, like it wasn't like it was in the early '90s or even the mid 2000s, you know, when we were wearing tall tees. It wasn't like, bro, like right. you've seen a bunch of women who were attractive, like with two kids. These women aren't having kids. These men aren't having sex. This is something's changing. So yeah, I get it, but you know, even with that, it's, things have things. It's have a lot of hoops and valleys, bro. It's a lot of it's a lot more we have to do now. And you thought, and it's funny because you would think social media would make things easier to make, but it actually made it like harder than ever. Because you could be talking to somebody and then somebody else. Like back in the day, right? The local pretty girl will probably get pulled up by the dude in the neighborhood. Yeah. Right? Could probably get pulled by like the guys on her side of town. Yeah. Now you can be building a relationship with like a chick who's like a cat. She's like a nine or 10. She could dress. She's fine. You'll be talking to her. And then like next week, she's sitting in somebody's Lamborghini. Yeah. Because social media it makes the world smaller. So sometimes a chick that you may be wanting to, you know what I'm saying, like get with, 
it's already a bigger fish going after her. But even in this reverse, sometimes with a girl, like, yeah, she may be attractive, but like, it's going to be a lot easier now to cheat on this girl who's attractive. Because like I said, 20 years ago, this was the bad bitch in the neighborhood. But, now I but, got seven but of them. She was only, but the thing about it is this, she was only limited to the neighborhood. She couldn't trade up from the neighborhood. Right. Right. Like, like the, usually that woman had to deal with the neighborhood. Now, I mean, Instagram is basically an open meat market as it is. I mean, it's, it's like e speed dating. It's no, I wouldn't say that. I'd say that it's the eBay for Botox whores. That's what I would call it. I mean, really, right. it's, it's trading. It's, it's, a, it's an auction block. I mean, literally, e like Instagram to me today is an auction block for, for, for women with surgeries and stuff like that. Because anybody can be bought and everybody has their price and everybody has their rate. Yeah, based upon your likes. Think about it. It's a place with the most... That's why we just need to go ahead and legalize prostitution and get this over with. Because this half-stepping with prostitution... It's a short stop. Where, yeah. you can, where you can... I, I get... The women get the most and the men get the least. We right. need to, If this is what we're doing... We're like Because right now, it's all in their favor. But if you were to open up the market and just make prostitution open and legal as as seeking arrangements is open or as Instagram is open, all that... Then all this would change. It needs, like I'm telling you, man, that that I think that right now things are so past normal that we have to take drastic steps to get them back closer to base. And opening, like they're already doing. They're, they're, they're it's funny, man. They're 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 trafficking men right now. Men are being trafficked. Men are being told every day by women, get out there and get my money on the street, bitch. Go pay for my meal at Ruth Chris Ho. Yeah. Like with with an attitude, with a vengeance. Like literally the roles have reversed. And now if the men try to flip that, now we have your Toxic human masculine. trafficking and all that type of stuff. And the full Misogynist. weight of the system, the full weight of the system will come down on that man. So it's like, bro, like it, this is just, bla and then they're rubbing it in our face. Yeah, yeah, I got my job. I'm better than you. Like, bro, it's like, can you, because to them, I gotta be honest. I, I don't really think they like money. I don't. I don't think they like money. I don't think they like all the stuff that they're doing. Do I like steakhouses because I like steak. I like uh, uh, certain things because I like them. I don't. You follow me on Instagram. Do I have to post everywhere I go? No. Do I have to post everything? No. I don't. I, I don't like. You're more about. You're more about the psychological game of people around you than you are about actually accomplishing things. And that's that's right. their game. I mean, I don't know how much longer it will last, but you know, right now it's getting pretty annoying, just to be honest with you. I can see that. I can see that. And I I agree on a lot of aspects, especially on the aspect of like um the way we're being spoken to sometimes about women. And it's like we don't have any rights anymore. We don't have any leeway, or even like I said, with dating. And this is one of my main sticklers. Like, a woman can post herself on five dates, five nights a week, and the niggas she's talking to would just have to fall in compliance. A dude true. can post a girl's fingernail or an anklet, and he's losing all of his prospects. Yeah, I mean, women, I mean. And it's like, why can women openly date and brag about having options, but a man has to um, move around as if he's only talking to you? It's and true. then and then when relationships occur because they control those social media platforms. They, like most of the audience is them. Women will pressure you to post them because they know you're going to lose your hoes and they know when they post their dude the same hoes in their DMs is going to be there. Yeah. Like women don't lose anything by being in a relationship or being out of a relationship as far as social media currency. But one thing I have noticed a lot is I don't now more than ever I don't any every girl I see with a kid or get or who's pregnant, I don't see their baby daddy or their husband. Yeah, they've traded up. You think like, like it's funny, man. I think it's a lot easier. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know, but I, I think it's a lot easier to be a baby mama these days, this, this day and age than, than the past. Let's be real. Oh, Let's talk about the strip club game. Women weren't making this money 30 years ago. I they mean, weren't even I mean like, bro, like, like you have guys who are, I mean, you have men who've, gone through school and become engineers and, and done complex designs. You have women that have gone through and gotten their doctorate degree. Right. And then you have women who can't even spell making more than both of them this day and age. 
it's like, bro, it's 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 getting. So you feel like we should be running more on a meritocracy than what's being ran on now. You think it should be more ran off intellect than actual like? No, I think talent. it should be male centered. Because right now it's not. Like I'm not gonna act like I don't I don't advocate for my my best interest. Right. I am a man, and I'm gonna advocate for what's best for me. And I think in my gender, and I women think, are doing the exact same. And I think to kind of segue to Clubhouse in a way, I think you experienced a lot of extremists on the other side. Uh, I don't want to say any names, but uh, very <laughs> large figures on the app. Oh, they're large, all right. Yeah, in more ways than one. <laughs> yeah, that, that um that spew a certain type of rhetoric that I think they're consistent on. Uh, the people that they're around stand on that type of rhetoric. They're, they're consistent on, and they look for ways to. They believe in the woke culture, the cancel culture. The um, you hurt my feelings or I'm going to take something you said and twist it and bring a whole community after you because I don't like the type of uh, principles and type of things you stand on anyway. So I'm always looking to f like comb through everything you have with a fine tooth comb. And if I pick out one thing that I don't agree with, I'm going to start a whole education uh, tutorial on why the way you're thinking is archaic and it's harmful and violent. One thing I hate. Uh, about Clubhouse is when people say that words are violent. Oh, yeah. And people act like they're in danger oh, off of, like, I've never seen words used as weapons. Yeah, but the thing about it is this. Okay, let's say the words are violent. Right. Okay? So if words are violence, then that is violence. How are you taking away people who are violent? By using violence. So by you silencing my words, you're actually using violence. So who is... So who's the violent one? And the thing is this, you're not even using words to destroy my words. You're using, uh, now I disagree. I think the person that says that words are violent is a hilarious person, uh, by the way. Um, but you have to, <laughs> you really would have to use violence to stop. How do you stop somebody's words? How do you stop somebody from talking? That, that, you that, have to that shut them up. Usually, what does that involve? Usually. A force. Exactly. Or or extortion or blackmail or something like that. Now that's violent. Well, what do you think about how, I guess, Clubhouse and kind of these Twitter spaces have emerged, how people have formed personalities, leadership groups, uh, quasi-cults, movements, content, um, the how it ha has brought out the worst in people, the best in people, how uh, people have been getting exposed. Um, you know, people have been seeing on high horses and found out they have done very, like, despicable, like, things they should be locked up for life for, but they continue Jeez. to stand on certain high horses of Jeez. I criminals, mean, just extortion on con artists. I try to stay away. Failed man. professionals. You know, I try to, you know, I try to stay away as much as I can, but, yeah, I mean, Clubhouse was, it was hilarious, bro. It literally could have been. And I know the, the love and clubhouse. It could have been a reality show. Really I mean, should. I got off of it now because I mean, I well, number one, I was per I'm permanently banned. They got your voice banned off it. Oh, uh, bro, like I, I'm banned permanently. I mean, that's Damn. fine. I don't really. I mean, I yeah. did it. I mean, I think it's. I'd rather do this. I'd rather have conversations, Facts. you know, into the and camera. Those are getting distributed, and it's it's a place where like me, you can have a conversation three weeks later. Somebody can come right back to this conversation. Yeah, it's fine, and 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 absolutely. And then the people that are on there. I mean, I'd love to see you try to roast me face to face. I'd love to see your comments to me face to face, yeah. not face to face physically, but of course face to face over the uh, over the camera. Because I've because I've gotten on live and gotten a couple people off from That's live. But, uh, but Clubhouse is it, it's hilarious, right? It's it's you really get the chance to understand people. But the thing that I think I like the best about it yeah. was we get to see how black men have no choice, especially if you're a heterosexual black man. You have no choice but to move to the right. The like you have nowhere to go. There's nowhere for you to move on this on this uh, table right here. You have to. You, this is gone for you. You're Man. going. You don't have any choice. You over here with the rest of the. the you over there with the rest of the misfit toys. I feel like you and your movement kind of neutralized because you remember when we first got on an app. If a black woman was talking and somebody coughed, dog, don't interrupt a black woman. Don't, don't interrupt. Why are you speaking when some when, when a woman's talking? It was like you could not talk if a woman in general, it don't matter what ethnicity she was, if a woman was talking, like you had to go on mute. Remember, it was like they used to have rooms of like, even sometimes like the divestors or something. It's like they would have rooms that were just like taking dumps on black men. And then you would have the counter where you have rooms 
that were taking dumps on black women. And I think I was an those, equal opportunity dumper, by the way. But no, so. of course, I've I've seen that firsthand. <laughs> but what I'm saying is what was great about it was that you seen both extremists and you kind of seen both of them, both parties kind of, I won't say be neutralized, but like there's if you're going to make a, the thing that I noticed is like, OK, with social media and with free speech and everything, if you're going to make a space for this, there has to be a counter space. This is true. And everybody is not ready for the counter space to At your all. space. And that's my issue right now with CPAC. OK, they don't want to be the counter space. You want to be moderate. You want to ease out of a street fight. You want to move. Walk. You want to blend in and try to like, bro, like it's like, like they want to blend in to like <laughs> cast their net out and then and then put red dye in their net what, once they got it. What goes around comes around. OK, these people literally they called you racist. They called you white supremacists. They burned your country to the ground. They tore down fucking statues. There are people that legitimately hate you. OK. And on top of that, you have a radical feminist movement, which we've already been through. Right. Then you have this bullshit where they literally shut you in your home. Like the, the people like I've gotten into three arguments, say a CPAC. Well, the Constitution. What the fuck are you talking about? Right. What, what, what? Well, liberty and freedom. Bro, they just made everybody take a lemon juice shot in their arm less than a year ago. Like, stop. Like, like what are you talking about? These archaic ideas. These it's words, words on a piece of paper. If you're not willing to fight for that, it's it's irrelevant. Like, bro, like you say one joke. You're you're banned for life. I hope I don't get banned for some shit I said on here. Oh, no, I mean, banned. it's like yeah. it it really is. People have this archaic idea instead of looking at where they are. And like I said, even when it comes to black men and black women, bro, you, you don't really have a choice. It's either listen, it's game set and match with the institutions and the powers that be. Right? right. The big they got an offensive line, they got wide receivers, they got running backs, they have right. the court system. They have politics. Look at the Democratic Party. It's the media. It's, 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 it's funny to me, right? Because the Democratic Party was very moderate when Obama was running in 2008 because most of the black candidates you saw were men. Now, you look today, what are most of the black candidates that are running? Women. And look at how it's drifted. Look at how it's drifted, right? Look at, look at like, literally, because look at how D.C., Atlanta, Baltimore, all these places. And you, bro, go drive down the street. Who do you see running for judges and stuff? Listen, I'm not mad at you, but, like, dude, men got to step up. And you got to realize, listen, these women, they've moved on. They, they're all about, they're coming after the throne. They want their power. They want to take what you have. And they want to, bro, not only that, they want to rub it in your face. They want to, they want to, not only do they want to beat you, especially women today, they don't want, they want to beat you. They want to high step into the end zone, Deion Sanders style while running up the score. You know what I realized too, what you're saying? I feel like men want to be in place so they can like, you know, have offspring and like have a structured family or some type of setting. I feel like women are getting in the bag and they're moving on like their Black Widow shit. Like, I'll just take kids from a man. Just, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll just extract semen from whatever man I deem to be a perfect sperm donor for the kids that I may want aesthetically. Or, you know what I'm saying? Just like, yeah. and I don't even have to have that, man. I'll have me and my kids for myself and I'll just run this by myself. It's like women, I feel like, have this um, agenda. Not all women, but just like women who subscribe to a lot of this shit that we're talking about. They want to get their bag. Yeah. Have maybe a, a kid or two and just be without men. Mm -hmm. And men have more. Don't forget about rubbing it in your face. Oh, of course, of course. Oh. And men have a more traditionalist mindset yep. where it's like, okay, you know, if I get the bag, they I think Superman's it. coming to save it. They think we're going back to Beaver Cleaver, right? Or even certain women who may be uh, the breadwinner of their household, like the way they they don't know how. And I understand when. People say, well, you know, the man is supposed to be like the head of the household, right? But when it comes to money, it seems like if the woman's making most of the money, she does not allow the man to still be the head of the household because she brings in the more money. And but with that, you're not setting a precedent of structure in your household, even if you don't have any kids. And, and like, they're not giving head to the household. Facts. It's <laughs> like it's like because you're making more money does not necessarily mean that you're, these men are in sexless marriages as well. I mean, when that happens, of course, when women course. make more money. But and but it's because women can use all this to their advantage, like the Me Too thing where you can't even like you can. I, you're, I already knew like you can rape your spouse anyways. But what I'm trying to say is like yeah. uh, women. I want to take out the R word. 
Yeah, women. <laughs> yeah. yeah, women res- restrict sex from their partners, right? Um, prostitution, like you said, is not legal. Um, all the Me Too things going around, like you said, men are having like, at least sex as ever. Yep. Because there's no really avenues, not only to have sex, but to have like consensual, yeah. safe sex with uh, another consenting partner. Yep. And because we don't have legal prostitution, you got these things like OnlyFans or all these paywalls where women are going to sell sex, the fantasy of sex. Yeah. So I have to physically do the duty of sex. And the, a lot of that money, like what women don't understand is like, yeah, you're making money short term, but like you can make a lot more money if you would do that, like physically. And I'm yeah, not saying yeah. oh, I'm for prostitution or anything like I, that. But well, I see, first off, I, I do. You're, you're get this is. This industry right now, what, what women are doing to men right now is an absolute crime. I mean, like, you're literally getting the most with giving up the least. Right. Like, like, for real, if you're going to, if you're, you can't just stick your toe in the water, okay, and then run away from that. Like, go full in. Because they knew, they know that when, when sex becomes as readily and available to men as everything else in this world, especially right. things that are evil, right, um, they're going to look at women differently. Like they're gonna look at they're gonna they're gonna and, and the thing is this I think some of it even benefits women. You claim that you're tired of thirsty men. You claim that you're tired of the guys. You can't guy. starve people and then complain of thirst. Hey, I'm telling you this Why right are these now. Guys and, so and, I, and the thing about it is, I'm tired of them being thirsty to you too. I'm tired of the guy at the end, the creepy guy at the end of the bar. You can get rid of them too. But also, you know what else we're gonna get rid of? Uh, your weekends in Tulum. We're gonna get rid of your your three hundred dollar dates. We're going to get rid of your cash app and sell me and all that bullshit. That's gone, too. Wait, you know what I have noticed? When I went to Vegas one time. Yeah. And I've seen who was really paying for, like, the prostitutes and everything. They weren't guys who like us. It was, like, computer tech nerds. It was some dude. It was really, like, undesirable dudes. It, or got, it, or got, it was guys that are holding this country together. If we lose, Financially. If we lose our technology brain power, we're done. But this is, this is my point, though. It is a sector of men that literally have to pay to have sex with women because they do not have these social skills to pull. Men who are handicapped, men who are autistic. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what I'm saying. And it needs to be an avenue for like undesirable men to freely get what they neurologically are designed to want and to have. Like you can't try to outlaw sex. You can't try to outlaw like everything is natural. Everything is. Um, you know, it's your body or the way you feel. Of like course. we can identify as a whole another race, but when we want to talk about some of the meat potatoes of this human nature, yeah, it's a it's a, big, it's a, a, big a, part. It's a, it's a moving of the goalposts. It is goalposts, and, and you know what's funny? You want to talk about the community? Yeah, rainbow community, bro. You know how much they have sex, dude? The yeah, average one has like. Ten thousand, some some well, crazy like that. Like five hundred. Think that their it's community absolutely is like centered around that. It is like first off, like I said before, we're the ones that are in the closet today. Okay, we're the ones that can't express our sexual wants or sexual needs, but everybody else is free to. Right, right. So everybody is free to say whatever they want to say about what it is they want. But the minute that I come out and say something, I'm fat phobic, right? Like, like, and think about it. Why are all these phobias and isms designed towards men's sexual needs? And, and on top <laughs> of that, I don't like the word like phobia getting thrown because it's not, not a afraid. fear. Yeah, exactly. I'm not afraid. Yeah, I just, think it's I just right. don't prefer yeah. that. Like, I don't have a mustard phobia because I don't want mustard on my sandwich. Mayonnaise phobia, yeah. Yeah, like, I just don't prefer mayonnaise. Yeah, like, I think it's disgusting. I mean, like, like, it's like so... We inflate a lot of words to try to put everybody under the same umbrella of, um, like, being, like, prejudiced. Yeah. But at the same time, like I said. Because calling people that has power now. Now, the minute that that doesn't have power. Oh, sorry about that. The minute that that doesn't have power, the minute that. You know what I call it? I call it crying to the ref. You know, and it's it's funny because that you even from minorities, that's what weakened black people. Because the ref started giving you what you want. The ref's not always going to be there. Not only that, what power, what, what weakened black people was the sexual access to the other side, to white women. I think so. Huh? And the reason why I say that because a lot of these civil rights Young men don't have a choice. What I'm what I'm saying is uh, when it was segregated, like black men had to be with black women. Like this is true. That's what you had this to do. True. It wasn't a lot of degrading black women because no matter what spectrum you fell in blackness, yeah, 
that's what you had to do. Yeah. But because it was so many Martin Luther Kings or, or James Browns, guys who were pro-black in, in public, but was sleeping with snow in private. Yeah. yeah. When Sydney it was Poirier, time to go. And then right. the Harry Belafonte. Right. They want to, Quincy Jones, like they wanted to fight for desegregation, not because they want an equal opportunity, because if you can have your own restaurant and I can have my own restaurant, we have equal opportunity yeah. in some form. In some this form. True. This is true. Not all the way, but in some form, if this we're both, even though we're segregated, if I have my own movie theaters, restaurants, bus stations, radio stations, there's an equal opportunity aspect there. But once we integrate, you're already integrated with people who own the Monopoly board. So you're not really integrating. You're just giving up exactly everything you have you to That's go true. under the same house. I so, never looked at it like that, but that is definitely true. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah. once you do that, and what was it? What was the purpose of this access to white people? Like these black men wanted to be with white women and not get lynched for it. Because when you look at the late 60s and the early 70s, it was an explosion of this free love and an explosion of these biracial couples. And what I'm saying is, that didn't They progress. made some very attractive women, by the way. <laughs> oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> we got to get on that. Of course, but so, that didn't push forward any black movement. Like, like seg- desegregation didn't give anything but sexual access. Well, free love eliminates the nuclear family, right? It eliminates the need for, I mean, like literally, like when you look at, we go back to segregation and we look at how much black men were married at that point compared to where they are today. Yeah. Um, there's definitely a difference with that. Now, that's so, a fact. But that's that's my main thing about when everyone talks about desegregation and what people fought for, bro. You didn't fight for equal rights because you you had a form of that by having your own business. You I never looked at it like for that, sexual you def- access. You definitely make a point with because that. we look at all prominent black men. What about from access desegregation. to wigs and weaves? See, now that is a conversation <laughs> that I feel like <laughs> during the late eighties and early nineties with the influx of the Asian community and their resources. Like in even in the late nineties, do you right? think weaves are worse than crack? Do you think like do you think like after the crack you know epidemic, I think, I think, this was, was like okay, boom, we got rid of the crack epidemic, and then they're sitting around drawing. Wh- what do we need next? How about bad weaves? You know what I think? I think and, weaves and crack. The the similarities I see between weaves and crack is that sometimes they get unfairly. Black people sometimes get unfairly put as the majority of the users, right? That's true. That's because true. I've dated women outside of black, right? Yeah. And they buy weaves and wigs and fake lashes. That's true. Dominicans and stuff like that. Just yeah, they as do. much. Yep. And I'm sitting here like, damn. Or they might put on a headscarf at night too. And it's like, damn, bitch. Like, the fuck is you doing? I mean, a headscarf. I mean, we wear do-rags. So, but when I mean, I think, there is that. So Right. But I think one thing that we're talking about too is the, the extensions... And hair that's naturally already your grade. Yeah. And putting on a whole wig when your hair grows like mine, right? Bro, I never knew. So this Or the tracks. Or when we see like the tracks or like the lines. I never knew what was under them wigs. I never knew that. When I saw a woman with a wig, right? And I probably need one right now with this. Bro, I never knew that, (laughs) that there's a full stocking cap under that. With the AI braids. Oh, my God. So, like I said before on Clubhouse. So you go to sleep at night looking like a cat burglar. God damn. You have a, so think about how hot it is under there. Like think about a hot day and you're walking around with a sky. You might as well go rob a bank after that. It's, you just pull the stocking cap from under the weave over your face. Yeah, it's a stocking. It's the like the new set it off. With the stocking cap. And then you put the whatever shit they put around that shit. Then you put the wig on top of that shit and the glue and all that other things. And my thing sometimes is like, for what? Like, for what? How do we go from frozen? So black there's a glue under there too. Yeah, sometimes it can get under. It's the like scalp a whole and, arts and crafts yeah, sometimes project. Sometimes it can get under scalp, and people have died from infections from Jesus weaves and, and wigs. And my thing too, sometimes I think about how far black people have got from like black pride. So where you, know, you had your afro, you had your natural hairstyles. Remember with, Free from 106 in Park? Yeah, she was fine. Yeah, but you don't see women. I mean, you do see some women rocking their natural hair, which I do love, but. You, I don't like when they walk around like the blue wigs, like the yellow wigs, like the oh Power Ranger color wigs. Like that's just not my type. It's not my style, bro. Like I think it. I think you know what I think. It's like I think the wig changes. Like I think it's like a. How can, it's like Venom, the it's movie like a personality Venom. That it's like on. when they the wig is Venom. When they put it on, it changes. It changes them into something. 
Nah, you I'm, know what I mean. Nah, I agree. I like, agree. It's a it's a whole new character that they put on <laughs> they put on a wig. But what I do see too is these guys like with whole receipt and hairlines. Oh my wig. god! Like the whole wig industry now is. There's but men, that's but that's the blurred lines of masculinity now. And all but, that but see, too. that's the blurred line of masculinity sometimes, where it's like, okay, I understood people wore toupees like twenty years, like all through all time, like dudes were like fake hair, right? But what I'm saying is a blurred line of masculinity, where like you see dudes going getting like uh like tummy tucks and, and fake abs, or like they're going around getting um like fake hair extensions and shit, or like you know what I'm saying? Like they're get they'll one day they'll have like a Kodak. Like fade next to they have like big ass dress like me. And it's hey. like masculine to me, masculine men don't feel that subconscious to like put hair extensions in. The only or, thing I've ever get considered like fake abs is like I understand men who take steroids, right? Yeah, I understand. I, yeah, I understand that. But like, you know, even all these things have a long term effect. Like the woman I saw last night at the gas station was gorgeous. Like she's telling people about her BBL. Right. This isn't you're not just washing that off out the shower. Okay. Th- that's permanently attached to you. Okay. And so. Yo, you, BBL culture, that's another epidemic that's going on. That's the new crack. And the reason why so, I don't like it, I like it. I like it. But I like, like it I said, too, where, there's a, where there's a culture, there's a kind of where, there, where you have. Yeah. I mean. The like button was here to be inspirational and just kill people. Right. Yeah. So like there's things that have been brought to the earth that have meant to do good, and yeah. there's always a duality to everything. So when I yeah. say that with the BBL, right, to me, it's for women who already kind of have a figure, already got something to work with, and then you're just getting a butt lift, you're getting some fats like that. Like, you're already kind of there, yeah. but you kind of need that extra push, right? Which is cool. But what I have seen is box-shaped built bitches putting $10,000 in their body, and now they're built like an ant or it's been a bitch who's been fat all her life, and now she's got the fat sucked out of one area and it's put tough. to another, and now they're completely different people. And it's like the dudes that are dating these women, their body structure isn't built like that. That's one thing people got to know. Like, your body structure, like, where your genes go is hereditary. Like, if you're yeah. built like a upside-down triangle, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. your kids are going to be built like an upside-down yeah. triangle. Like, yeah. you know you know when girls are, like, coming yeah, up. I'm naturally whatever. lean. I don't have, like, any pe- fat people, like, in my family. Fam- my bloodline. Right. right. Or, you and know, I don't eat a lot of either. I eat maybe once or twice a day. Right. Or, you know, some girls like big titties is like hereditary, like a fat ass. It is. Hereditary. It, I, I got to be. That, that is a. But that, man, not, I got to be honest, bro. Like, oh God, we're going to get to talk about this. Dude, when that's hereditary, that's amazing. Like that, bro, because I didn't see some. I didn't see. Dude. Yeah. It's like a blessing. And then you got the. And what's funny about it. Is like the main ones that be having the hereditary, they be cutting them off. But you know what? Bro, I also like, see dude, like this. there's a girl on Instagram yeah. right now, like that's got like, and she's like 20 years old, 22 or something like that. It's like, like you're blessed. And it's like, oh, I think I'm going to cut them down. I, I mean, I guess the back pain and all that, but like, yeah. what's the pain that's going to come with the BBLs or the breast implants? The, my, the pain that's going to come from it is when you have a kid or you have a daughter and your daughter is growing up how she's naturally supposed to be shaped. But then her mom, who's got all this work done, doesn't look anything but like what it. What does that and look like at 50? What does a BBL we look like We don't know yet. Yeah, don't I know. Yet. That's, that's the crazy that's thing, the thing about, about that. Like, what if it's, you know, and maybe what if it's like diaper the booty community? Bro, what if it's like, <laughs> what if it's like crack? Right? Like, what if it's like. You know, because I guess like the in the beginning, effect. bro, like literally like the first like first time. crack. Yeah, it's a party. Drug, Everybody's and then crack. Because, you know, you, it's been a problem. People that like when crack first dropped, it was. Yeah, 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 and, like, yeah, it yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. Like, so they don't know. Like Richard Pryor was freebasing or fucking or, or like even the or the people who do Molly. And then they don't eventually realize it's heroin. Yeah. So it's like, what is the What is the end of this BBL movement? What does this look like 10 years from now? And a lot of them are getting it taken out. That's what I. What, that's what, what I do damage think. is done when you take it out? Like, bro, like you've already cut yourself up to put it in. What does it look like when you take it out? Also, because you have put fat in those areas, that's where fat's going to be transferred to. Like, that's just genetics. That's what I'm telling you. Like, your genetic makeup is crazy. Like, you're taking like right. you got a fat stomach because that's where all the fat gets transferred to, right? Yeah. You have certain women who are naturally built like Coca Cola bottles. Yeah. Like, naturally, their shape is like that. Yeah. But if your shape's not like that, and then you're fucking up where the fat gets transferred, because now you put it in your butt, then you're taking it out. Now your body's gonna get thrown out of whack, and you may swell up like a fucking balloon because your body is so confused on where to transfer the fat. 
it just transferred to a whole bunch of other places. Like now you got fat ass arms for no reason. Now your neck's fat as fuck for no reason because the body doesn't know where the conditioning, their body isn't conditioned to transfer fat to their to its traditional genetic makeup. So that's why when they'll take it out, put it in, take it out, put it in. Dude, what, see a lot if, of what if like weird as hell? What if it's like the asbestos for what? Like remember the best asbestos, they put it in all the buildings, right? Right, right. Then right. it ended up causing cancer. What if this stuff ends up causing like a major, like bro, like what if this, what if there's like, like B, what if there's like BBL zombies that like rise from, I'm like telling you, bro. Class action lawsuit. Like I'm some, t- like bro, like, like have you, did you have a BBL between the years of 2018 and 2030? Yeah, the stuff that like, bro, with, like, all that was poison we need to take. Because, you know, even with uh, fake boobs, like the whole silicone thing, people didn't realize you got to get them changed out every fucking 10 years. Until like the 90s and 2000s start coming, you start seeing a whole bunch of your favorite models and old bitches with like seeping fucking <sighs> implants and affecting titties. But like nobody gave a fuck in the late 80s when everybody was getting fake tits, right? Oh my God. Nobody yeah. cared in the fake 90s when you had like big ass balloons. But then 2000s came around, them old ass ladies with big ass Dolly Partons. Yeah. The bitches was ripping through the skin <laughs> and, and forming whole <laughs> mold and shit. And, they, and motherfuckers oh, had to get them wow. taken out. Yeah. So a lot of times you just gotta watch and you just gotta wait for history to repeat itself. Yeah, I'm curious to see where this goes. Where 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 do you think we're going? Like, I mean, it's just like there's so many things we've been hit by at once. It's like 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 okay, so we're in warp speed. We are, we are. Like t- I remember Tucker Carlson said something about like how fast things are changing and people can't adapt to these quick changes. Every two so, years so, is like eight months. I gotta be honest. What is the, the biggest change I saw was Instagram. Like, I've never seen anything change the relationships between people, especially the relationship between men and women, like Instagram it was, su- it was the most superficial thing you can do. You don't get followers off of your intellect. You don't get followers off your perspective, your point of view, your life experience. You're literally getting followers off of the best aesthetically pleasing picture you can post. Crazy. So you can be dumb as hell. And this is why I did start liking Clubhouse and Twitter Spaces. Yeah, things, no, no, audio no, chats, you gotta, yeah. Because... You took back the power from just attractive people. It's just true. Like, that's what I like about Clubhouse the most, where it was like, you have some ugly ass, weird, crippled, blind, decrepit looking motherfucker that was intelligent and they were leading two, three, four, five hundred 500 people rooms, not because of how they it's looked, true. but because they were being appreciated by their intellect and, this is true. and their perspectives. And that mm-hmm. leveled the playing field because when we first got on the app, it was a whole bunch of superstar dudes with a whole bunch of models up there bro bikini pictures, i would roast them nothing. the worst not i would roast them, I, bro i would th- bro there, there's probably some of them that have a bounty i would roast them worse than anybody like bro i was absolutely insane like yeah to them. so the the toxic weddies room of course the main ones she was she was cool the main couple ones were cool but bro and then there was like a canadian one like a canadian toxic wedding room but in that it was all havoc Holy but shit. the thing is a lot of the people ended up liking me, bro. A lot of the people ended up liking what I had to say. And uh, they were like, yeah, you know, bring them back on. So um, there is that. Because most people don't want to be in an echo chamber, even if they subscribe to something. Like, oh, yeah. Most definitely. Like, even when you looked at, like, how when you first came around the app, and at first we were kind of like, it was a real tense time. America was around, like, the election and you know. January 6th. Then. Right. So yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah, yo, yeah. we got this black dude who's like, you know, who's fucking with the Proud Boys and all the other shit. Like, niggas was confused. But then I think the more time went on, especially with, with our clique, we were like, you know what? We like Aaron because he's going to give us a perspective that nobody else is going to have. He's going to stand by it. And the people who are uncomfortable around what he's saying, we don't really want around anyways because if he doesn't have the freedom to speak and we don't give him the freedom to speak, when it's our turn that we may have something we want to say, we're already conditioned the audience to silence people with opposing points of view. So we have to stand by him and let him get his shit off because he's symbolizing with everybody else and with the other guys you've seen come after you. And at the same time, like even when you see like a Barrio and Dr. B, like, yeah. I, I like Dr. B was kind of how I got my, the Hunger Games was a great event. Yeah. Now yeah. we, now we ended that. We, yeah. we, we single yeah. handed. What's funny is it was a year ago from today when we ended it. Cause I Damn. remember roasting Damn. old boy at CPAC in the garage. Like, Damn. that's what I'm saying. So it was literally, Damn. no, Dr. B, no, Dr. B definitely, I mean, it, that's where it started to me. Like, that was where, right. you know, it was a lot of people that didn't like me, bro, but I just remember, like, really just getting those shots in. I mean, and bro. people might not agree with what I have to say, but the shots, 
Bro, the way you used to roast people, bro, like that shit would be hilarious, dog. Like niggas would come on there and it would start like just bopping your voice alone. They think it would be like an easy cook. And you start flaming their profile pictures, bro. And like you'll see somebody else trying to call it. They might. Like, then it's like four people <laughs> argue with you. And you just sit here like going in like a single bro, file line. Like just I literally, I literally, hot I literally just got done roasting people at CPAC, bro. Like literally, there was God a guy. Damn, so there, no, bro. literally, there was a there was a group of atheists there, bro. And bro, there was an atheist guy there with a um. Now, mind you, it's hot in Orlando today. Yeah, it's like there's an atheist degrees. guy with a. A, a, a jacket, a tie, and one of those little vests or whatever. I, I asked him, bro, where's your fedora hat and your Tommy gun? Like, are you are you trying to resurrect <laughs> Al Capone? Like, ro- roasting him, <laughs> roasting him. Then, yo. then you had, then you yo. had like, yo. so literally, like, and then we just started roasting. There's atheists Holy and all shit. that, so Tommy isn't here, but we we got on them, and he he had to get me off because like the moms of Loudoun County came, and I had my back and forth with them. Um, you know about how they're they 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 apparently think they're, that well, our children are going to get along with black people. Yeah, there's a reason why your kids are in Loudoun County and not in Richmond, right? Or in Norfolk, not on Mercy Drive. Exactly. So I, I'm trying to figure out what it is. This work, like I said, don't try to don't try to moonwalk out of the street fight. Okay, we, we we're, we're already here. The BLM people have already called. They did what they want. They took your they took money from all these big corporations. Burned everything down. Do you feel like? Do you feel like there's being an attempted infiltration inside the Republican Party? Ooh, that's a good thing. But, that's a good I, question. What you're subscribing? That's to a good me, question. Man. I feel like the Republican Party has taken a all lives matter. Oh all, my god! They took an all Republicans matter approach to broaden the horizon because they kind of they kind of seen They're that. They're trying to win people over. I don't want to win. Listen, you first off, you have to renovate before you innovate. You have to get your own people. You feel like they're court. not. You feel like Republicans aren't trying to stay down for like a few elections to like really find their no. true core, really get nah. their, their battle cry, really nah. get their no. Nah, they don't want to fight. They don't want to fight. They're weak. coming they're, out the depths. Well, I mean, Trump is speaking right now. They don't want to fight, man. They're, they're 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 weak. Like, but the thing is, those kids at AFPAC, that AFPAC event last night, they're they're down with it. They and all of them have been kicked out of CPAC because their opinions were too radical. Because one dude, because one dude uh, uh, got into an argument with a drag queen. So you let the drag queen, st- like you let the drag queen say he kicked him out. Then you invite it. So you kicked out like Alex Jones or whatever, all these other people. I think they kicked out Milo, all these other people. But yet you have Van Jones. Van Jones. CPAC embraced Van Jones. Why? A Van dis- Jones is a Democrat. I don't know why. That's what I'm talking about. They're trying to kiss the other side's ass so they won't beat them harder. Van, not on, I was like, Van Jones is not just a Democrat. Van Jones is a fucking clown. Yeah, okay, on, even for the Democratic yeah, side, he's a fucking yeah, joke. He's a he he cries on TV on cue. He gets paid to cry on TV, and that's what th- and, that's, and, that, and that's what I'm saying. So yeah. you stab Trump in the back. You stab Trump in the back. You crying. You kill a bully. Don't be a bigot. You get to say your prayers, and then. Trump sat down with you. You shaking his hand for the criminal justice thing. He heard you out. Right. And he, he's a better day to be a parent. A year later, all these people stabbed him in the back, bro. All these people stabbed him in the back. And what do you think about what's going on right now in Ukraine and Russia and like America's response to? Would you Would you try America? Yes. I mean, bro, like, come on, man. Like, brother, Russians, we're waiting for this. You feel like you have a transgender admiral navy. I mean, excuse me, a transgender uh, uh, admiral. Yes, I would try you. So you feel like, um, because I think they let NATO go in and like, I guess. I haven't looked at it recently. I mean, I'm not even like. You don't think America is really like, we're going to go to war, right? Bro, no. Like, we're going to fight. Because if one America. First off, we don't need to go. Like, this is what I'm saying. This isn't any of our business. We need to. China says we're already meddling in like. I wish. Russia's business. Are we good meddlers? Because we just got ran out of Afghanistan. I'm like, she had no business being in in the first place. Like, the thing is this. We got to get our own house in order first. We shouldn't be going messing with other people's stuff. Right. Like, seriously. should be in other people's business, right? And I think, honestly, what's going on in Ukraine, like, yeah, that's happening. But just like you said, it has nothing to do with us. And what has the Ukraine's government or their people ever done for us? Like, last time I checked, they were saying they have... They still, uh, subscri- some people over there still subscribe to neo-Nazism. So 
on some real shit. Like, why are we sending money to the Ukraine to fight Russia? Why don't we Dude, in full, like we should be building up America bro, from within, bro? We like, send money. Like I said, I've been to Orlando. It's all these people here from all these other countries. I just got back from Colombia. You know how much money we give to Colombia? And you take that money, you immigrate over here. Like, and then when let's say America turns into Ukraine, right. how many people are gonna stay? They're all gonna leave and go back to their countries where they came from. America doesn't put its people first. The American government right now, our current administration, does not care about the people. It only cares about some people. But my, my issue is this. They're doing what they said they were going to do. Biden is not doing anything he didn't say he was going to do. My thing is when, when we get the ball back, because, because Biden's fumbled this, we're going to win the next election. We're going to destroy these people in the midterms. I don't want no half-stepping the next time. My big question is who do you think is going to be the Republican elect. I don't know, man. I think our part, I think from what I see with the CPAC and APAC stuff, we it, everybody needs to clean their own house. I want to clean house of these people who are claimed to be conservatives, but but you you're you're championing atheism? That's not conservative. You're championing single motherhood? That's not conservative. Like what's the face? Who is the face? I, of the right now I like party. Trump, but I'm telling you you got to look in the AFPAC and you got to look in the Nick Fuente. Bro, Nick Fuente has had everybody, all of these people, like some of the people from InfoWars. He had Jesse. Right. He had, Jesse, he had a couple congressmen, uh, um, Marjorie Taylor Greene, all these people, right? And Marjorie Taylor Greene has had all of her co committee uh, assignments stripped from her. Paul Gosar, the same thing. My problem with Republicans is you won't do the same thing to Democrats. You won't fight as hard as they fight you. Right. And that's my problem. But right. I'm telling you, that AFPAC stuff I saw last night, that is the future of the Republican Party. This CPAC stuff, they're fake, man. They're controlled. Like, think about it. If All Republicans Matter conference. Oh, God, That's God. what it was. Dude, think about it. Think about it. What should the Republican rallying cry be right now? Think about Trump. After Trump's second year, right? right. What, what was the Democrats rallying cry? Impeach Trump. How many Republicans you see trying to impeach Biden? Because you ain't got no heart. You ain't trying to fight. Dude, the Democrats didn't even need to succeed in doing it. They still went out and tried. All four years. And even when they got the little paper signed, it's like he really got impeached. Even though like document, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're they gonna tried it twice. And we're not trying to fight because we want to we want to be. It's vanity. We want other people. We want the Democrats to like us. We don't want people to say, oh, you're going too far. But see, one thing that's funny to me is just how certain narratives get switched depending on who's saying it. We have more evidence that this election was tampered with than the <laughs> Trump election, mm -hmm. but yet everybody swept them up under the rug because it was who you wanted to win. Okay. All right. Another question about Russia. Who has been running their mouth on Russia the last four years? Who has been on, st on, on you, you thought, you think they wasn't going to try us? You've been calling Putin out. Yeah. These Democrats, you've been calling him out. You've been calling his name for the last four years. Yeah. Oh, Trump, Russia did this and Russia got Trump in. Biden, you specifically called yeah, you him, out. Call him out. And so it's like, okay. Now you're in place. Now yeah, yeah. So now he tried you. He tried exactly. you. So now what you going to do? Exactly. He tried you. Think about, think about Russia. Imagine, imagine I'm sitting there and you telling me I rigged your election. You know, but he had nothing to do with that. And then also, it's funny with the vaccine mandate when Trump crazy. was in office. And I don't know, we're not even going to, because I know YouTube's going to like go crazy. <sighs> yeah, talk, but it was just funny when Trump was in office, they were already saying like, oh, no, nah, we don't want to take any vaccine he endorses or we don't want to take any medicine he endorses. Then when they get in office, they're like, we're we pushing us Forced on everybody. It, bro. One thing that I really love about being from, say, to Florida, bro, like Ron DeSantis did not give a damn about any vaccine mandates, any, you got to be vaccinated to work. Like literally the whole time the pandemic was going on, bro, Florida's just been wide open. We've been chilling. We've gone to the clubs. We've been socializing. Like it's been no pandemic. Like, yeah, we might wear yeah, masks last at certain year. events, but like we have been chilling. If you catch COVID, sit your ass down for like two weeks and, and bring no, it back No, now it's five outside. days. Now it's yeah, five but days. Yeah, what I'm saying, I know people who caught COVID yeah. multiple times, vaccine, vaccinated or not. Like, honestly, bro, that's one thing where if you want me to, if you want to give me one reason why I back uh, Ron DeSantis is because he really was the only motherfucker pushing up against the vax. Yeah, but the thing is this, I think all the companies that forced it, I think they should all pay a fine. And I think Ron DeSantis had that. That's what I'm saying. Some of these companies, I feel like 
the companies have done more to oppress a lot of the American people than the government has. Like so, so my thing is this: it's companies run politicians. Why not? Why not? Why not impose a BLM tax? Oh, oh, so you gave money to bail people out of jail when they were destroying people's businesses? Okay, let me get a list of these companies, and we're going to impose yeah. a tax on you for doing that. You, but the Republicans don't. They don't want to fight back. They don't want to fight. But do you think it's a way where Republicans can gain back their power and Black Americans can get their just due? I think of it like this. Republicans are the most they're probably going to get is 25% of black men. You're never getting black women. The Democrat Party has given them too much. Think about it. They, 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 made them, they made them vice president. They're putting them in the Supreme Court. They made them head of their own households and their own communities with Section 8. They made every. Why, why would black women ever align with Republicans? Like I said, most the most you're going to get is maybe one in four of black men. I don't see black women ever coming to be conservative. I just don't think that naturally, I think black women right now, they're on top of the game. Why would they give up when they're on top and they're, 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 they're moving forward? Like, that's what I'm saying. Why, why would I, okay, think about it. If I was in this position as right. the number two of my household and the government made me number one, right? Then I get all these laws changed. I get all of this. If I have a child, right? I, I get WIC, I get housing, I get all this kind of stuff. All right. Okay, that was, that was step two. So step three, now I'm going to start funding organizations that put women first. Then on top of that, hey, the government, oh, really contracting. Okay, I'm gonna, I can start a little business and then I can get the government to give me priority for being a woman. Why would they ever, you want to talk about how they got their just due? They've gotten their just due. They have. So like for, for, for men... Like I said, one in four, because you got the other two, two men that are, oh, she's my queen. I'm going to follow my mom to the end of the earth. All of right. that fucking bullshit, right? right. Queen re reposting. I saw something today on the fucking shade room of some guy with some ugly woman, like, find you a queen, get you money, stay out the way. Yeah, let that money go and your queen's going too. But anyway, right. like one, one, one in four guys. I, 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 the thing about yeah. this is even with my movement, I don't need everybody, bro. I would rather have a loyal 25% than a shaky 50. That's all I need. I don't need everybody, bro. I need, I need, bro. Give, give me, give me 20, 20, give me. Dude, if Republicans win one in four black men, those black men show up to vote, Democrats will never win again. Now, I do think there's going to be a surge of black voters for the Republican Party this next coming election. Not from, not, depends. The reason why I say that, because not. once we start opening it up, like, once we really start opening it up, just kind of how we did with this election a little bit. When it was like, okay, you got no tangibles. The Democratic Party gave you nothing. Oh, they got. Think about who got. No, the no, no, Think no, about I, who got the tangibles, bro. Think about who headed up BLM. Think about who they're putting in the Supreme Court. I see that, but, <laughs> what, but what I'm saying is, you can say all this, but when we don't have any statistics, we didn't get the tangibles. So do you? So you? So you think that the. Democratic Party can lull black people to sleep again with this next election, knowing that during this term, Joe Biden hasn't given like I know you're talking about certain like knickknack things. Yeah. But I'm talking about like when when you see a groundswell for like reparations, you see a groundswell for like CRT or just like certain things anymore. where it's like black people like you just can't give us chicken wings and butter biscuits and get us to come out and vote and do the electric slide. Dude, Some people love the butter biscuits, bro. And the reason why they love the butter biscuits is because they're able to say, those got people over there hate you. And people are so indoctrinated. Listen, I think, yeah, this is the thing. I don't think the Democrats have to do anything more. I think they've done enough. Um, and I think some, they, they have. They've got to where they need to go. They bro, got everything they, they people wanted. people are their loyal, most loyal voters. And also think about, um, um, think about it. They've imported half the third world in here. They don't need your vote anymore. And, and think about it. They, they've, they've even systematically done it to where, you know, they, they can make people part of the rainbow community. And with that, they really don't need your vote anymore. If they can make people, if they can make, people, if they can make the, the country international and more gay, they don't need your vote anymore. You heard what Joe Biden said when he yeah. was like the biggest community right now is going to be the Hispanic community. So like, like I got to work with have yeah. to. So, Bro, I mean, but the thing about it is this. I'm sorry, dude. I mean, I don't blame Joe Biden as much as I blame the people that voted the way they did the last 60 years. Yeah. 
Like I like the thing is I can but I can blame Joe Biden for that. I can blame hey you I can can't say blame hey. the game plan that was given to him based off of the characteristics that bro you know a scout report is a scout report. That's this is correct. You know you give me a scout report. Somebody only goes to their left and you know drives their left and pulls up from the right. I'm gonna play him like that. You can't get mad at me for playing what was on the scout report based off of your tendencies. I mean, dude, it's and the thing about it is this this was a long time coming. I mean, right. Yeah. We get, yeah, no, you were saying it was a long time long, coming. This is a much. long time coming, bro. This was a long term project a to import to import this many people into America. Think about it. Black people have been in this country four hundred years. Right. In twenty years, we've imported double that number into America. Is it is it even America anymore? Think about think about it. I always say this. If I say I I got chocolate milk for you, right? And this is America. America's chocolate milk. It's 80% milk, white milk, and 20% syrup. And I mix that together. And I say, this is America. Now, <clears throat> I say, okay, well, I'm going to change some things. I'm going to put some salsa in there. Right. I'm going to put some curry in there. Right. Right. I'm going to put some, some rice in there. Right. I'm going to put some Wuhan bat in there. So what you're is saying- that, Is that still America? So and I mix it all together. We is that the, still America? So you're saying we went from the United States of America to the United countries of the world. Agree. This is Captain Planet now, and it's a disaster. Damn. Well- Because because I have no loyalty to Captain Planet. I have no loyalty to- I don't, I don't care if you look like me. Can, do you know- First off, people are not even acknowledged that America is a place historically or culturally. Even one of my arguments on Clubhouse when we would go up against these people from Europe and we're all the same. No, we're not. Can you name me five songs from Motown? Did you hate the dad from um, Jackson American Dream? Like, wh- like this is yeah. what I'm talking about. Like, in certain ways you grew up. That's what, like- it, what, it, what did they say after James died on Good Time? You don't, we don't have, we don't relate to each other. You're saying we have a culture that should be recognized. It is. But the thing is, the only people that seem to not recognize it, they the media has gotten people to not believe in it themselves and say that you have a culture that's somewhere else. Damn. Well, you know, I think we talked about a lot this episode. We got in very deep yeah. into politics, religion, uh, patriarchy, and just a, a lot of things going on with society. And this is one of those episodes where you know, we're not going to be talking about like sports. We're not going to be talking about just like lighthearted shit. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times people be like, oh, I want to talk about this, I want to talk about that. It's like when we have people well versed in these type of topics, this type of pod you're going to get. You know what I'm saying? But I just appreciate Aaron. I just appreciate you pulling up. You come always in, letting people know what type of time we are, letting people know that we're fresh in real life. So it's not we just talking from a point of like, oh, how come we can't get in the game? Trying to we be. We're in the game and we're telling y'all what the game is and how it's played. Trying to be. Yeah. So, uh, Perspectives and Facts podcast episode. 21 oh my bad 31 my boy aaron here we're gonna be dropping this this week and we're gonna be cutting up clips so we're gonna be dropping them like how vlad we're dropping his videos so you're gonna get uh content daily with this and uh, we're gonna be on tiktok pretty soon with clips also so uh thank you once again to orlando podcast studios recording it live and you guys have a wonderful saturday and see us later man peace out